Okay, in this mini tutorial, we're going to think about the anterior cerebral artery. Now, despite its name, and to the confusion of many students, the anterior cerebral artery does not really supply much in the way of anterior structures. It would be better named the medial cerebral artery because what it does is it supplies structures near to the midline. It supplies medial structures. So it doesn't supply anterior structures as such, it supplies medial structures. And you'll recall that the anterior cerebral artery arises as um, one of the branches of the internal carotid. So the internal carotid splits into the middle cerebral artery and the anterior cerebral artery. Um, and we can see that on the angiogram to the right. So here's the internal carotid doing the carotid siphon. Um, and, and at this point here, it splits into the middle cerebral artery and the anterior cerebral artery. Now this, this image here is in the coronal plane, by the way. So we're looking head on um, at the head, face on to the head, um, seeing at the coronal plane. And you can see the um, extensive distribution of the middle cerebral artery, and very nicely you can see the distribution of the anterior cerebral artery near to the midline. Now how does it distribute itself uh, to these structures close to the midline? Well what happens is the anterior cerebral artery um, originates here, and it loops back over the corpus callosum and runs all over the superior surface of the corpus callosum and it sends multiple branches all up to the medial aspect of the cerebral hemispheres mostly the frontal and parietal lobes okay so that's how it distributes itself so therefore um, strokes inv involving the anterior cerebral artery tend to involve the lower half of the body primarily because the lower half of the body is represented most medially in the hemispheres if we look at the coloured diagrams below, we can see in green the distribution of the anterior cerebral artery close to the midline. Indeed, it does supply the most anterior pole of the frontal lobe, um, but that's only one part of its distribution. It supplies this crest along the superior lateral surface of the hemisphere and dives down on the medial aspect of the hemispheres. So that's its grey matter distribution, um, but the anterior cerebral artery also has a very important white matter distribution, and that is to the corpus callosum, because as the anterior cerebral artery loops around the corpus callosum over its superior surface, it sends lots and lots of little branches into that white matter pathway supplying the corpus callosum. So a big um, stroke affecting the anterior cerebral artery could technically um, result in um, damage to the corpus callosum and the effects that you might be familiar with which result from disconnecting the two hemispheres from each other. Another thing for you to consider um, is in subfalcine herniation where the calcarine sulcus here is pushed under the falx cerebri um, the anterior cerebral artery can get compressed then as well. So that could so you could have subfalcine herniation, which could secondarily lead to a stroke syndrome because we've compressed the anterior cerebral. Um, so that's all I've got to say on this vessel.